In this video, I'm going to talk about my three favorite books on the topic of biohacking. So stay tuned. My name is Peter Joosten. I'm a biohacker, future thinker, and I give a lot of webinars and keynotes about the topic of biohacking, human enhancement, human augmentation, and transhumanism. I write articles about these topics, like you can imagine while you're watching this video right now, I also make a lot of videos. So if you're interested, please do not forget to subscribe to my channel down below. So biohacking is getting more and more popular in the last couple of years. And also if you're going for your search engine and type in biohacking or biohacking books, you came up with a lot of results, think of books by Dave Ashbury from the brand Bulletproof, uh, also Ben Greenfield or Anthony Di Clementi, they're all authors in this field. But I think my personal opinion is that these are not the best books on the topic of biohacking. So in this video, I'm going to share three of my favorite books. I'm going to give you some background information about the book itself, about the authors, about my personal story, my personal relation with the book. And I'm going to share with each book, I also want to share three lessons or insights I gained from reading that book. So the first book is The 4-Hour Body, which was published in 2010. And this book is written by Tim Ferriss. And maybe you're familiar with the name, with the author, Tim Ferriss, because at the moment he also has a very successful podcast called The Tim Ferriss Show. So some information about the book, it contains 12 chapters and a lot of extra bonus material. Uh, and it's also pretty thick. Uh, this book has 576 pages. So it took a while for me also to read the book. And I want to share my story about this book uh, because I was familiar with the work of Tim Ferriss because in 2007, he also published another book called The 4-Hour Workweek. And I already thought The 4-Hour four, four Workweek was a really amazing book. I became fascinated by increasing your productivity, looking at time and also at money in a different way. So The 4-Hour Workweek was really like eye-opening for me, really blew my mind. Um, and then a couple of years later, uh, Tim Ferriss wrote this book, The 4-Hour Body. And he kind of got a franchise of the 4-Hour concept because after this book, uh, he also wrote The 4-Hour Chef. Um, and I also heard him in the interview just joke about it because it's not like you have like four hours a week and then you have a perfect body, but it's more of the idea that you... Um, can achieve great results with less in investments in time or money. And that's the basic idea of the book, but also in the 4-hour work week, but also in the 4-hour body. What are hacks and shortcuts to uh, become faster, to become more muscular, to increase your libido? Uh, all kinds of hacks and ideas are in this book. And what I like about uh, the 4-hour body is that Tim Ferriss is also like a human guinea pig. So he tries all kinds of experiments on his own body. That was really also an inspiration for me when I read the book. And I also did experiments uh, on myself, also based on what Tim Ferriss did. And one interesting thing about, um, about this book is that Tim Ferriss did not coin the term biohacking. Maybe he was not familiar with the term. Uh, maybe some other reason um, and I'm also curious if he has like a regret that he not like called this book the, the biohacking book or something else um, but in a way he was like it is really about biohacking and also at the time when I read the book I was also doing a lot of measuring of things of my body think of, of a sports watch and Tim Ferriss um, went one step further, like all doing experiments on his own body to improve himself. So not only measuring, but also improving. That also had a large impact on my thinking on this topic. And now I want to share three of my insights I gained from this book. The first one, and that's quite interesting because um, he, he writes about different methods you can sleep. So there's also like the Superman sleep and the polyestic sleep. So you um, well, if you're interested, you can uh, search it online, but it's about where you have sleep less, so you have more time to be productive. But then in the additional 
um, information in this chapter he, he writes about lucid dreaming and this really fascinated me at the time and also at the moment like lucid dreaming uh, maybe you're familiar with the movie called inception with leonardo dicaprio and they also um, use this this phenomenon of lucid dreaming and lucid dreaming is the moment when you are uh, sleeping um, yeah you dream but lucid dreaming is that you are um, you recognize that you're dreaming and so you can also um, do actions yourself so you can interfere with your dream so um, there are people who are really trained in this topic and they can also fly and do other things while they were dreaming and Tim Ferriss also writes it about this topic in his book and also makes some recommendations for example the use of Hupacina A which is a supplement that can help you to come also become um, to get into the state of lucid dreaming. So lucid dreaming is one of these really interesting things in the book. Another thing I found really cool about this book is the idea of post running. So I'm a runner, I like to run. Um, I started running when I was, I think, 12 or something. My mother also likes to run, so maybe I, I, I like running. One thing I always thought, well, running, it's not that difficult. You just put on your shoes and you go out for a run. And in The 4-Hour Body, uh, Tim Ferriss writes about his experiments with post running. And post running is a different method of running um, and mostly has to do with your angle. So um, you have, um, the, the basic idea of post running is that you have like a small incline and you use gravity like you fall forward and then you land on your feet to so to prevent you from hitting, <laughs> hitting the ground. And that's a revolutionary way of running uh, that costs a lot less energy. So that's um, one, one of the things I really uh, enjoy that like a basic idea, um, like running at the moment, at, at that time when I read it, uh, Tim Ferriss then thinks, okay, let's take running. How can you hack it? How can you have shortcuts? How can you improve it? So that's one of the, one of the things besides lucid dreaming that I really like. And the third thing out of this book is his own experiments with anti-aging and longevity. And before reading the book, I was also sort of interested in this topic, but I was still young when I read the book, I think about 24, 25 years old. So, you know, I was still at a lot of stamina and I, I was feeling young. So I was not per se that interested yet in longevity and anti-aging. But Tim Ferriss was already doing experiments like looking at his genetics, at his, at his blood work, just to look at markers for a, for aging. And then he also makes some recommendations for certain uh, types of research and also some supplements like resveratrol, which is also in red wine, and also hupis, uh, not hupacina A, I just mentioned it with lucid dreaming, uh, but rapamycin, metformin. So reading that chapter in this book on, on longevity and aging really start, started me thinking about this topic and also doing my own research in this field. So that's the third thing I got out of this book. But like I mentioned, it's a it's a pretty thick book. So there are a lot, tons and tons of more of uh, insights and lessons. So if you like what you just heard, uh, I also encourage you to buy this book. My second book, my second of the top three biohacking books is the Biohackers Handbook from 2019. And this book is written by three Finnish guys called uh, Timo Arina, uh, Oli Sofiari and Jaco Helmotea. Well, uh, Timo, uh, Oli and Jaco, I hope I pronounced your names right, uh, because these are three guys from Finland and I also know them pretty good, especially Timo and Jaco, because I also interviewed them uh, for my podcast and also for my YouTube channel because these three guys they are like the forerunners in the biohacking movement at least also I think worldwide but especially in Europe and the book contains of five parts namely sleep, nutrition, exercise, work and mind and what I like about the book is that the authors are um, using the insights and knowledge they gained from organizing the biohacker summit for all these years. Uh, I also went to the Bayerka Summit a couple of times. Uh, it was in Helsinki. Uh, that's like the, the, the main area, the, 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 
the main city because they originate from Finland, the three authors. But I also spoke myself at the conference in Stockholm, in Sweden. It was also organized in London. Uh, that's the United Kingdom, but also in Canada. So it's like a really an imperium. They also have a podcast. So what I like about this book is that it's really, it's a beautiful book. Like you, you can, uh, especially compared to the four hour uh, body, uh, this is the, the uh, it took so much care in the design of the book. Like you can see here and uh, with the use of certain uh, graphs and images and drawings. So it's it's a beautiful book, and another thing I really like is they um, uh, the book is also chock full with uh, references to scientific papers, uh, with a lot of facts and also practical advice to yeah upgrade your life. So I think it's really at the moment the best book on biohacking. And again, I will also share three of my insights from this book. And the first is, is they also, the first part of the book is about sleep before nutrition, exercise and mind. And they did it on purpose because they say sleep is like the most important thing to get right in your life. And that made me, also made me think of another book I read called Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. And yeah, the authors of the Biohackers Handbook really make a case for why, why it's important to have a good night's rest while you have it's important to focus on your sleep but besides that and also getting into like uh, the sleep cycles and these kinds of things they also have tips and advice to upgrade your sleep think of uh, room temperature think of air quality but also the use of certain supplements so i also take magnesium uh, before i'm going to sleep because that helps to uh, increase my sleep quality my deep sleep my REM sleep these kinds of things so that's the first insight I gained. The second is the authors are from Finland and Finland is pretty famous for their use of fungi, of mushrooms. So they also write about, uh, at least in the Netherlands, I'm not really familiar with that. Like what are the beneficial use of fungi for your health, for your cognition, for your immune system. And they talk about, for example, lion's mane, which may increase to help your cognitive performance and also for example about chaga and reishi so i really like um yeah that they that, that they mention all these different type of fungi and how they can benefit to yeah biohack to upgrade your life and it's not like uh, real new technical stuff but it's like old school finnish fungi which you can find in the forest so that's also what i find really amazing and also what i'm still applying to my own life I think every day or at least once a week, I'm using these kinds of fungi to help my body with certain function. Third thing I got out of this book, namely the use of saunas to increase also your immune system, your longevity, your health. And there was also a research that if you go to the sauna for three times a week, it also um, reduces the risk you have on certain heart diseases and a cardiac arrest. And if you're interested in this topic, I also had an interview with Dr. Rhonda Patrick on this topic, uh, where she also talks about this research and other benefits of going to a sauna. And what I really like, if you go to the Bayarka Summit in, uh, in Helsinki, Finland, uh, at the side of the summit, there's also uh, a sauna. So it's really cool that uh, you can go to the sauna with, and then you're in the sauna naked with one of the speakers for example or fellow attendees and what i really like is that they walk the talks like it's they, they they say it's 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 good for your health and then when we organize an event like they do they put up a sauna so kudos for that and the third book on the topic of biohacking is make way for the superhumans from 2016 and if you're in the states uh, it has another title there that's called our grandchildren redesigned from 2015. the book is written by professor michael bess he's a professor of the vanderbilt university in nashville tennessee and the book contains of four parts uh, the first part is more about technological developments at the moment and also developments in science and other parts are, are about identity, about justice and about choices. So it's more about the social, cultural, economic consequences of biohacking. Because that's my personal story with this book. 
um, because while I read this book, my own perception of biohacking sort of changed because before that I was also interested in lifestyle, like going to the sauna, having all these kinds of supplements, nootropics, uh, taking ice baths, doing briefing work to, to increase my cognition, my productivity, my, my health. But when I read this book, um, Make Way for the Superhumans, my interest sort of shifted because I found that I was more interested in not like how can we use uh, these gadgets to increase our current life, but I think that the use of science and technology will have a major, a way larger impact on the world, on our lives, on our future lives compared to the more biohacking as a lifestyle. So you also might say, well, is this book about biohacking more? Maybe if you have like another definition of biohacking, which is more about lifestyle, you can say, well, this book is more about uh, human enhancement. So radical changes to the human body. And I also want to share three of my insights from this book. They're somewhat different compared to the insights I gave about the book of uh, the 4-Hour Body and the Biohackers Handbook, but I think they're still worth mentioning. First, the first is a Jetson fallacy, and best Professor Bex makes, makes the case that um, it's really unlikely that we will use this, the progress in science and technology only to change the world around us. Well, also we probably will be using it to change ourselves, and he calls it a Jetson fallacy because most of the times the science and, and science fiction um, we think of the world that has changed around us with flying cars and with robots but like you can see in the Jetsons where everything around them has changed but they are still the same because in the Jetsons they live 100 years in the future but they are still the same just like a family in the 1960s when the uh, cartoon was made. So that's the first thing I gained from this reading this book that I thought wow it was like a light bulb moment like wow okay and, and, and what happens when we change our bodies and what, what kind of impact will it have on the world? So that's the first thing. The second thing is that Bess gets into the different methods and technologies in which we can change the human body, in which we can apply human enhancement or biohacking. If you have like a broader definition of biohacking where you also look at it like um, ways in which science and technology can change the human body. And he talks, for example, about genetics, but also nanotechnology, about bionics. Um, and what I really like is that he states the, the, yeah, the state of the current research, or when the book was published in 2015-16, but also makes some scenarios about, okay, what can happen in the future? So that's what, what I really like about this book. And the third insight I got from this book is that like I mentioned, one of only one of the chapters, uh, one of the parts in the book is about these technologies. But the other parts about are more like sort of uh, finding and making scenarios about what will happen. What will happen to our, uh, our cultures, to the way we cooperate, to the way we look at human life. Will there be a divide between people who want to upgrade themselves and people who are not willing or able to yeah, boost their own function and that's why he also states that it's really important to have a continuous dialogue about this domain of human enhancement of uh, in increasing our capabilities with the use of science and technology and it also got me started got me started in going to write articles to give webinars to give keynotes so for uh, yeah for a large part i have to thank professor michael bess and for writing this book because he really got me really fascinated in biohacking more than like the lifestyle biohacking as you might say. So to summarize I talked about my three favorite books about biohacking uh, namely the For Our Body and the Biohackers Handbook which is a big one it's over here and the last book was Make Way for the Superhumans. So I shared some of the facts about this book, the work of the authors, and of course my personal story, how it changed my vision of the world and also my expertise of biohacking human enhancement. And I, want, I also shared three of my lessons I gained from this book. But like I mentioned before, uh, the books are pretty thick. So I would invite you to read the books yourself to gain more and more lessons um, and maybe also some other things 
really resonate with you compared to me. So I would invite you to read the book. And if you have a book yourself, which you think is your favorite book on biohacking, please leave a comment down below. Please subscribe to my channel. And also if you have a question or a remark, leave a comment down below. Go to my website if you want to have a free download. And if you are interested in more in-depth knowledge and know-how about human enhancement, human augmentation, biohacking and the superhuman era.